the big challenge and the big thing you see with with VCs is they um, with CEOs is they and early stage founders like Jenna they mix this up. So the other thing that you can learn about with kids, if my little girl here, if she was about to step out in front of a bus, am I going to let her step out in front of a bus? Of course I'm not. I'm going to pull her back, right? Of course I'm not. I don't want her to learn that lesson. That's not the sort of parenting that I want to be. And you've got to understand the difference between umbrellas and buses when you're a leader. Because when you're an early stage startup founder, everything seems like a bus. Everything's a problem. Oh, pull the team back. Don't do that. That button can't be green. It must be blue. It's the end of the world if you get that mistake wrong. Many early stage founders, and this is a big point at the time when they work with me, is they start to, they, everything feels like it's a bus. Nothing's an umbrella. Nothing's a learning experience for the team or for them. And to make that shift from an early stage founder into a growth founder, you need to know the differences between umbrellas and buses. If you don't, you will burn out. You cannot be across all of the decisions as your business grows. It's impossible for you to be able to do that. It doesn't scale. You need to scale. Everybody needs to learn, and you need to let go a little bit. Okay, next story. Two other founders that I work with. This is Dana and Chris. And what was interesting about working with, I started working with Dana, the CEO, and I eventually started working with, with Chris, the CTO, is they weren't getting on. And on the surface, it seemed like most things were all right. I mean, you've probably heard this stuff before. I mean, I think I've seen this in quite a few presentations over the course of the last few days. We need to launch the new product this quarter. And the CTO is thinking, well, we can launch something this quarter, most definitely. The whole thing, maybe not. And this is a big problem. Of course, it's a big problem. The CEO has an expectation of the CTO that this is going to happen. The CTO has an expectation of the CEO that I'm not going to ship everything. You're going to get something. That's just how Agile works. They both have mismatching expectations. And this, of course, is a huge problem. And you see this across businesses. I see this all the time with, with co-founders. They have mismatch in expectations. I run a mastermind group for founders on the road to an exit. So I work with um, six founders at any one time. We're working through an e towards an exit. It's so surprising about how many of them haven't had a proper conversation with their co-founders about exactly what the exit's going to be, what the shape of it's going to be, when it's going to be. And we have mismatches like this, where they're both thinking different things. Right through to much more operational stuff as well about actually who's got control, where the buck stops, who's running this business. I hear this quite a lot as well. The business decides who gets built. No, the tech team decides what gets built. You kind of see where the mismatch is. These folks are living in the world of expectation, and it's a really dangerous place to be. So often I come in and see these sorts of situations. The first question I ask is, well, what's your agreement on this? What's the agreement about an exit? What have you got written down about this? And the CEO always says, oh, no, we don't need agreements. We're on the same page. And well, clearly you're not if you're having these disagreements about these things. You're living in the land of expectation. And expectations kill relationships at the end of the day. Expectations kill relationships in business, but they also do at home. So I notice any CEOs that I'm working with who have expectations of their team often have expectations of their kids, of their partner, of all of these things. Expectations are dangerous. They kill relationships in business. They kill relationships at home. Okay? Your spouse expects you home at 6 o'clock. You come home at 7.30 because you've got a meeting. Your spouse is upset with you. Okay? Expectations only have two results. Either you meet expectations, and it's like, well, great, you met expectations. Or you miss expectations, and there's a lot of disappointment out there. Remove expectations. Swap expectations for explicit agreements. Ideally, written down. Write it down. What is your exit plan? It may be only two days into your startup. What's your exit plan? You say we're going to ship this feature this year. What does that actually mean in that first meeting? What do you actually both mean by that? Swap expectations for agreements. Tell your spouse what time you're going to have it be home. Have an agreement. What happens when you're not home at that time? This sounds like very simple stuff, but it's the stuff you've got to get onto if you're going to be a good leader. Because as soon as you start doing this yourself, your team are going to start to do the same thing, and disagreement amongst team members will also fall away if they're doing exactly the same thing as you. OK. Other challenges that I hear. So this is, um, I'm lucky enough to be working with a, a fantastic COO. She's working with a founder. Um, she's new to the business. Um, and she's come in, and this is what she's been dealing with on a, on, a, on a weekly basis, almost daily basis. Things like this. The competition isn't doing that. This isn't going to work. People are coming to her and saying these things to her all the time. We just can't do it. 
this is my favorite, the VP of sales every month is coming and saying, can you just get those numbers from HubSpot for the sales presentation for the board, please? Every month, the same question. And the CEO's like, yeah, of course, no problem, I can do that. Right through to other things like, Dan, Dan isn't performing. And if you look at these, these might seem like quite serious problems, but ultimately, these are all surface level problems. Okay? An experienced CEO will spot these are all surface level challenges. Inexperienced CEOs will dive into each one of them. Well, why isn't Dan performing? Let's put Dan on a performance plan. What has Dan done? All of these things will happen if you're an inexperienced CEO. If you're an experienced CEO, you'll spot that these are surface level challenges. We call these monkeys. And what was happening with this fantastic CEO, at the end of every day, she was collecting monkeys. Every time somebody came to her, she collected another monkey. Each one of these is a monkey. And by the end of the day, she's got five monkeys she's got to deal with. All of these problems are now her problems. The best leaders don't let the team leave any meeting, any workshop, any call with them. With, uh, with their monkeys. She does not let the monkeys be left with her. The team have to leave with the monkeys that they bring. This is from a fantastic book called One Minute Manager by Keith Blanchard. Don't collect monkeys. And that's all well and good, but how do you do that? How do you stop collecting monkeys like that? What do you do? What's the simple way of doing this? And it relates to something I mentioned earlier on. 